Welcome to another short video from me. Today, I want to share an important piece of information, or rather a setting, on the Solex X3 hybrid inverter that is often ignored by many people. My Home Assistant configuration is now being used very frequently. In fact, the majority of my customers use it as an alternative to the Solex Cloud app. The most highly appreciated and truly remarkable feature in connection with the Solax X3 hybrid inverter is its exceptional ability to automatically and intelligently charge the battery, the electric vehicle, or indeed both together during the most economically advantageous and cheapest times, especially when the self-produced photovoltaic PV energy is simply not sufficient. This truly and significantly saves you real money providing substantial financial benefits. But sometimes it happens that someone calls me in the morning and says, hey Alex, my system is running on emergency power. Or, hey Alex, I have no power in the house. Or, I have no power in the house this year because the main fuses have tripped. And the inverter is showing a fault. How can that be? Well, the reason for this, or actually that's not entirely correct because really it's your own fault. But the cause is my cheap grid charging function and or cheap car charging. But not because there's any error in the automation I created, but because you didn't set something correctly on the inverter. You need to know that the charging power in watts depends on the number of batteries you have installed. If you have set the charging power to 30 amps, then when charging from the grid, the D58 battery will be charged at about 3.5 kilowatt per battery unit with one D58 master and one slave. That won't be a problem with one master. And with two slaves, that should still work out as well. But if you have one master and three slaves and the heat pumps also turn on while charging, then it could get tight. If you have up to eight battery modules connected with the BMS parallel box, then it definitely won't work anymore. Right? So now I have to apologize, I just said something incorrect. Ah, uh, but now I don't want to start the video over again at the BMS parallel box. The charging power doesn't increase there because the voltage stays the same and the 30 amps that the inverter can draw from the batteries are split between both battery strings. But with a parallel installation like the one I have, that's definitely the case. Because then I actually have 30 amps of charging power available twice, once per inverter, and then things really take off. Most household connections are protected with 25 amps per phase. That means your house connection provides you with a little more than 17 kW. That's why your inverter should also be protected with 25 amps per phase in that case. And this circuit breaker should be installed right after the electricity meter and not, as I've seen a few times, directly at the grid connection of the Solax X3 hybrid inverter. The primary reason for this particular situation is that if this specific circuit breaker trips, the electrical grid connection of the hybrid inverter becomes completely without voltage, consequently causing it to automatically switch over to its EPS mode. However, the power coming from the public grid can still flow at least up to the three-phase transfer switch or the EPS box. This means that in this case, both contactors would be energized. Although they interlock with each other, if a technical fall occurs, the grid power could meet the unsynchronized EPS power. I know of a case where, for this very reason, there was a total loss in a household. So, I've gotten a bit off topic from today's subject. With a 25 amp fuse, the house connection provides you with about 17 kilowatts. If you now charge a D58 master with three slaves over the grid and you've set the charging power to 30 amps, then the storage unit will be charged with between 13 and 14 kilowatts. If on top of that, the heating element in the boiler or a heat pump switches on, it can definitely happen that you exceed the 17 kilowatts. At some point, the circuit breaker will trip, and if the system is installed correctly, you'll switch to emergency power. But it can also happen that only a pre-meter fuse blows, which means you won't switch to emergency power, because the inverter only switches over when all three phases are lost. And then, of course, 
all electrical devices connected to the affected phase will no longer be supplied with power. And the inverter will also show a fault. So to prevent this from happening, you could theoretically adjust the charging power manually in the advanced settings of the charger or have it automatically adjusted during grid charging via Home Assistant. However, this still isn't the ideal solution because then you won't be charging the battery at the maximum possible charging power. But most of the time there is only one or at most two hours when electricity is really cheap or even costs nothing. And that's why I haven't included this in my configuration, which is available for purchase in my shop. That's why in the advanced settings of the Solax X3 hybrid inverter, there's a menu item called main breaker limit. For most people, this is set to 250 amps because that's the default setting. This setting should also be set to the value that matches your circuit protection. If your protection is set to 25 amps per phase, then simply set it to 25 there. If your protection is higher, then set it accordingly higher. This ensures that the inverter never draws more than the set 25 amps per phase from the grid, and based on this setting, it will automatically reduce the charging power or the amperage used to charge the vehicle so that you never exceed the 25 amps per phase drawn from the grid. I've set the setting to 24 amps at my place because unfortunately I only have a Mickey Mouse house connection, but so far it's always been enough and I don't want to push grid power through my contactors right up to the limit. In the future, when there isn't enough solar energy, my fuel cell will take care of charging my storage, but more on that when the time actually comes and I install or put it into operation. As you probably all know by now, I'm getting a new power storage unit, which I'm really looking forward to. I'm installing it next week. My previous D58 storage unit has already found a new owner, where it will continue to serve well for many, many years. Congratulations to dear Uwe. If he changes his mind and doesn't pick it up once my new one is running, I'll let you know. That's it for today, and we'll see each other again in the next video.